Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a tutorial on a crochet dog sweater. So let's go ahead and dive into the materials. I also have a written pattern on this tutorial that is available for download. So I will also leave the link for that down below in the description and up here at the very top of the screen. For our yarn, I will be using the Jody Long Alba Erin. This is an Erin weight yarn. This is also classified as a number four worsted or Erin weight, but this is a really gorgeous merino and alpaca blend. So it's gonna have a really nice touch to the skin. It's gonna keep our pups super cozy and warm. To go along with my Erin weight yarn, I will be using a 6.0 millimeter crochet hook. We'll also be needing some stitch markers to help us mark our placements throughout the pattern. Feel free to use a measuring tape as well, along with sizing up your pup, your dog. So that's gonna be the basic materials. Let's go ahead and dive into the tutorial. As always, we need to start off with a slip knot. So I'm just gonna bring that through, grab my 6.0, and tighten up the slip knot onto my hook. To begin, I'm gonna start off by making a ribbed band that's going to wrap around your dog's neck. So what I'm gonna do is just start off with a basic chain, and this chain can be however wide you would like it. I don't want my chain to be too wide on my dog, but enough for a little accent. So what I'm gonna do is chain five, and then an extra two for turning, because we will be using double crochet. To make our ribbed band, I'm going to yarn over and skip the first two loops from my hook, and insert my hook into the third chain, but make sure that you turn your work over and you grab the back loop or the third loop on the chain. And this just adds a little bit extra stretch. So with three on, yarn over, pull through two. And with two on, yarn over and pull through two. So this is our first double crochet in the row. And as always, the chain two at the beginning does not count as a stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, find the next chain in my row, and work another double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and repeat until the end of your row. Here is the end of row one, and as you can see, I have five double crochet placed. To start row two, I'm gonna chain two and turn my work. And for row two, I'm going to yarn over and work double crochets into every stitch in the row, but I only wanna work into the back loop only, BLO for the entire row. So I'm gonna pick up the back loop only and work a standard double crochet. So there is my very first stitch. Again, yarn over, find the next stitch and pick up the back loop only. and work your double crochet. Again, yarn over, look for the next stitch, insert into the back loop only, pull up a loop with three on, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And here for my very last and fifth stitch, you can choose to work into the back loop only, but in order to avoid a little gap at the very end of the row, I'm going to pick up both two top loops and I'm only going to do this onto the very last stitch in the row. So here is the end of row two, and again, I have five double crochet going across. Let's go ahead and move on to row three. I'm going to chain two always and turn my work. And for row three and the rest of this ribbed band, we're just going to be repeating rows two over and over. So I'm going to yarn over, turn my work, and find that very first stitch in the row and insert into the back loop only and work a regular double crochet. So there's my first stitch, yarn over, look for the next stitch, pick up the back loop only and repeat until the end of your row. That is my fourth stitch and now here at the very last stitch in the row, once again I'm just going to be picking up both two top loops to avoid a little gap at the end of my row. And that is row three. So I'm gonna to continue to add on rows to my ribbed band until it's long enough to comfortably stretch around my dog's neck. I've just finished up my ribbed band and for my dog size, I've chosen to go with a total of 17 rows. So for some quick measurements, 17 rows with those double crochets gets me to around 10 inches wide. And at this point, I can go ahead and connect my ribbed band in the round. So in order to connect our ribbed band, what I wanna do is take the very last row and the first row 
And I'm just going to sandwich them together like so. And at this point, I'm gonna chain one and we're just gonna work some slip stitches through every single stitch. So what I'm gonna do is pick up the front loop only on the panel facing me, and I'm gonna pick up the back loop only on the panel further away from me. So these are kind of considered the outer stitches. I'm just going to yarn over and pull through all the loops to create a slip stitch. So that is the very first stitch. Again, I'm gonna grab the outer loop or the front loop on this front panel. And then I can also pick up the back loop or the outer loop on the back panel. Yarn over and slip stitch them together. Picking up the front loop on the front panel and the back loop on the back panel. And slip stitch. Before you pull through that slip stitch, you want to loop over your brand new color like so. So now I have that red color on the hook and I'm just going to pull through all three of those loops and create your very last slip stitch. At this point, now that our band is joined in the round and I have my new color attached, I can go ahead and start working on the body. So in order to do that, I'm going to chain one here at the very start of my row and begin placing single crochets as evenly as possible in the round. So for this, I'm just gonna go back into that very first stitch and place a single crochet, find my next little opening and work another single crochet. And a good rule of thumb having these double crochets across the ribbon band is to work two single crochet per double crochet. So I'm just gonna continue working across the ribbed band, spacing out these single crochets. I've come up here to the very end of row one, and now I can go ahead and slip stitch into that chain one space from the very beginning of the row. So now our band is joined in the round once again, and at this point I can chain two because I'm gonna be going back to double crochets. I can turn my work inside out, and let's go ahead and work on row two. So for row two of the body, I'm gonna be switching back to using double crochet, but at this point, I need to start working some increases so that the shape of the body becomes wide enough to fit over your dog's shoulders and their neckline. Now, because every dog size is slightly different, you will have to mess around with the increases in order to find what's going to fit your dog the best. For my dog's body size, I'm going to choose to work an increase after every fourth stitch. So I'm going to work four double crochet in a row, making sure to pick up both two top loops, and then I will work an increase into that fourth stitch. So there is my first double crochet in the row. Here is my second, my third, and now here at my fourth stitch, I will work two double crochet all into that same stitch. So there's one, I'm going to work a second double crochet. And I have one, two, three, and then two stitches worked into that fourth stitch. So I'm going to repeat this for the whole row. I'm gonna work three stitches in a row, and then two stitches into my fourth stitch. So there's two, here's three, and at my fourth, I can work two double crochet. All right, so I've reached the end of row two and this is what my piece is looking like. As you can see, it's starting to grow wider and wider. And at this point for row three, because my dog is not very wide, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up with working one double crochet across the entire row. And for row three and onward, I can just work regular stitches. Let's go ahead and start on row three of the body. I'm gonna chain two like always for my double crochets and find the very first stitch in the row and work one double crochet. And then the next stitch, picking up both two top loops, one double crochet. And I'm just gonna continue to work one stitch across the entire row. I'm finishing up the end of row three here. I have worked my very last stitch. And at this point I can slip stitch into my chain two from the very start of the row. And then just slip stitch both of those stitches together. So this is the end of row three.
what I'm gonna do is continue to add on rows using the same steps from row three until I can get the bottom of the sweater to reach the base of my dog's arms. So again, we just want this sweater to extend until the start of their arms and that is where we can make our little sleeves. So I've just finished up row four and at this point my sweater is long enough to reach the start of my dog's legs. Now at this point, we're gonna be dividing the sweater into three different portions. We are gonna have a middle or center chest section which is going to run underneath their belly. We're also gonna create little openings for their armholes and of course we will have the back side of the sweater. At this point, what you wanna do is put the sweater onto your dog and determine where and how wide you want the armholes to be. So for my dog, I'm choosing to leave off four stitches on both sides of the center. So in total, I have eight stitches going across the chest. For the armholes, I'm also going to be leaving off six stitches and I'm going to be placing my very last stitch marker on the absolute corner of the sweater. Again, this portion is gonna take a little bit of trial and error. Now, depending on the shape of your dog's body, you might want your armholes to be a little bit more on the inside of the sweater, but because my dog is a little funky and floppy, I do need to make sure that her armholes go all the way to the very corners of the sweater. To go ahead and start working on row five, I'm going to chain two at the start of my row, and I'm going to work one double crochet into each stitch until I reach my stitch marker. And I should have four double crochet here at the start of my row. At this point, I need to create a chain that is going to reach my second stitch marker. So for my dog's body size, I'm going to leave off six stitches right here, which means I need to create a chain of six. And here is my sixth chain. I'm gonna stretch my work all the way across, yarn over, and place a double crochet directly into that stitch marker place. So I'm gonna insert and work a standard double crochet. And at this point, I can continue to work one double crochet across the entire row until I reach my next stitch marker. I'm starting to come up here to my very next stitch marker, so I'm going to work that very last stitch. And once again, I need to create that chain to stretch over this open space and connect it to my other stitch marker. So I have six stitches left off at the center, and I'm going to create a very loose chain of six. Here is my sixth chain. I can stretch it across, yarn over, and work one double crochet directly into that stitch marker placement. I can go ahead and finish out working one double crochet into each of your remaining stitches. Let's go ahead and start working on row six of the sweater. Now for this row, we're simply gonna be working one double crochet across the entire row, including the chained section. Chain two at the start of your row, and then just begin placing one double crochet into each stitch. So I'm just working across the chest section right now. I have four stitches personally. So here is my fourth stitch. And now that we're approaching our chained sections, we just wanna place as many double crochets as we have chains directly into this open hole. So again, I have a chain of six going across, so I will be placing six double crochet into that open chain space. So I'm just gonna be working directly under that chain. That's two. Here is three, and now here after my sixth double crochet, I can continue working across my standard double crochet sections. I've just worked across the back side of the sweater and now I'm approaching my second chain section. So we're just gonna be repeating those same steps. I have six chains, so I'm going to place six double crochet into that open space. And now I can just carry on finishing out with one double crochet into each stitch until the end of my row, and then you can slip stitch into your chain two. But regardless of what row you're on, this is roughly the shape that your project should be taking. Here for the start of row seven, I decided I wanted to do a little bit of color work and some stripes, so I just made sure to change out my colors during that slip stitch. Now for a good majority of this sweater, I'm going to continue to add on basic rows of double crochet until I can reach my next measurement, which is going to be wherever you would like the underbelly of this sweater to stop. So here for rows seven and onwards, I'm just going to be placing one double crochet into each stitch across the entire row. 
I thought I'd take a second to show you guys how my progress is coming along so far. I'm actually towards the end of row 10 right now. And as you can see, I've been doing a little bit of color switching right here and I thought I would show you guys really quickly how I do my color changes. Now for me the color changes happen at the end of every single row. So as you can see right here I've just finished up my very last stitch in the row and what I'm going to do is insert my hook into the chain 2 space as if to slip stitch. And with that original color I'm going to leave a very long tail. Go ahead cut off your yarn. I can go ahead and grab my secondary color, loop it onto the hook, and now I can use this new color to slip stitch with. So I'm just gonna bring that new color all the way through and finish out that slip stitch. All right, so at this point, this is what the sweater is looking like. I've worked up a total of 16 rows up until this point, and this is where I want the underbelly section to stop. So what I'm gonna do at this point is leave off a few stitches again, as we did when we were creating the armholes up here. And this is just going to signify where my decrease stitches are going to begin. So for my dog's body size, I've decided to place a stitch marker into the fifth stitch on both sides of the panel. So I have one, two, three, four unmarked, and into that fifth stitch, I have that stitch marker. And likewise, over here on the other side, I have one, two, three, four unmarked, and then a stitch marker into the fifth stitch. And for all of those who are wondering, that is about four inches that I'm leaving off across the underbelly section. So at this point, after the very last row that you have, I'm going to cut my yarn and tie off a pretty little knot right here, and I'm going to reattach my yarn into this stitch marker right here. And from that point, what we're gonna be doing is working a decrease at the start of our row, work all the way around the sweater, and then one more decrease here at the end of the row. So our work is going to turn back and forth and back and forth, and ultimately we should have a nice little sloped decrease coming off of the sweater. I've just reattached my yarn into my stitch marker place, and I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop, and chain two and the chain two does not count as a stitch like always. So at this point, I'm gonna work a double crochet two together into the very first two stitches in the row. So I'm going to yarn over, insert into that very first stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. And with two on, I'm going to yarn over, insert into my next stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through all three. So that is my first little decrease at the very start of the row. And at this point, we can just work one double crochet across the entire row until you have two stitches remaining. I'm starting to come up here to the end of my row and I still have one, two, three stitches left. So I'm gonna work one more double crochet and then here with two stitches remaining in the row, I'm gonna work my second double crochet two together. So again, yarn over, insert into that next stitch, pull up a loop and pull through two, and then yarn over, insert into your very last stitch in the row, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three. And what we're gonna do is just continue to decrease on both edges for every single row until we can reach our final length. So I have a little bit more progress on my dog sweater now. As you can see, I have been working those decreases on both edges of the underbelly. And at this point, I've only worked up four rows again with those decreases. This is pretty much what the sweater is looking like. As you can see, we have a straight underbelly right here, some nice little curvatures right here to hug the dog's body. And now at this point, I'm gonna change up my decreases just a little bit more because what I want to do is create somewhat of like a sloped, or more of like a curvatured backside to this dog sweater. But for the fifth row and the sixth row, what I wanna do is work two decreases at the start and the end. I'm gonna work two double crochets two together. So here is my first decrease, just like so. And one more time into the next two stitches, I'm gonna double crochet two together. So essentially, this is what your sweater should be looking like. And then I'm just gonna work one double crochet across the entire back until I have four stitches remaining. I'm coming up here to the end of my fifth row. And as you can see, I have one, two, three, and four stitches remaining. So what I'm gonna do again is just double crochet two together into the next two stitches. 
So those two stitches are joined into one, and then one more time into the last two remaining stitches. Ooh, almost worked, a regular double crochet. So that is what the end of my row is looking like. Let's go ahead and start working on row six. And as I just mentioned, row six is gonna be the same repeat as row five. So I will be working two double crochet decreases at the very start and end of my row. So there is my first decrease. And I'm going to work a second decrease right next to it. So that's gonna take up the first four stitches in the row and hopefully as you guys can see there is like an extreme angle here now going on it's starting to take a little bit more shape i'm coming up here to the end of my row six and again i have four stitches remaining so i can work two decreases right next to each other here is the first decrease and now we just need one more to finish out this row so that is the end of my row six. So I'm actually just gonna be working one more row of decreases, but we're gonna change it up one last time. So here at the start of row seven, I've already chained my two. And what I'm gonna do for this last and final row is skip the very first stitch in my row. And I'm gonna work my double crochet decrease into the second and the third stitch in the row. So again, I'm gonna skip that first stitch, insert into the second stitch in the row and work just one decrease stitch. So at this point, I can just go ahead and work one double crochet across the entire row until I have three stitches remaining. I have one, two, and three stitches remaining. I'm gonna go ahead and work a double crochet two together into the next two stitches. And now if you guys remember at the start of the row, I did technically skip over that very first stitch in the row. So because I just want my work to join, I don't want it to look so kind of messy here at the very end, all I'm going to do is chain one after my decrease stitch, and I'm going to slip stitch into the chain two from the row prior. I'm going to slip my hook into that chain two space and slip stitch my work together. So from the very top of my ribbed band to my last and final row, I actually have exactly 12 and a half inches. So this is where I'm going to stop. And at this point I can go ahead, cut my yarn, tie off a pretty little knot, and then use my accent color to add just a nice simple row of single crochet with a little bit of color. I'm going to attach my new yarn at the very center of my work where we were previously working those turns. So just find a nice little spot to kind of wiggle your hook through and attach on your yarn. From here, I can bring up a loop and chain one. And for this row, I will just be using some single crochets. So I'm also gonna be weaving in my end as I'm crocheting. But I'm just gonna be picking up every available stitch that I can find and just working one single crochet through both two top loops. So take your time, find all of your stitches, and space them out as evenly as possible. And now here at the very end of my row, I can slip stitch directly into that chain one space that we created when we first attached our yarn. So at this point, I can go ahead, cut my yarn, tie off one last knot, and then go through the whole project and weave in my ends. If you would prefer, you can totally crochet on as many rows of single crochet along this belly section as you would prefer. But for my liking, I think I'm just gonna stick with this one simple row of single crochet. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. And if you guys would like, as I mentioned earlier, I will also have the written and downloadable PDF pattern linked down below in the description. I'll also have it linked up top here. And that's gonna go ahead and wrap her up. Bye.